So in the next one, we want to convert the logarithmic equation to exponential form. And so if you remember, um, exponential form is log base b of x equal y is goes back and forth with y. Sorry, no, sorry, the base is b. b to the y equals x. Okay, so this is the base. <coughs> and the and this is the exponent. And so if we want to convert these to exponential, what I would have is my base is 9 to the power 2 is equal to 81. So that's part A. And then part B, the base is A. So A to the C equals M. Um, all right, convert the following exponential equations to logarithmic form. So this one would convert to log base 2 of 32 equals 5. And um, this one would convert to log base C of D equals N. Simplify using the basic properties of logarithms. Okay. And so for this one, um, the natural log um, and the e undo each other. So this is just equal to y plus 4. Log base 2 of 2 is going to be equal to 1 because 2 to the 1 power is equal to 2. So log base 2 of 2 is 1. Um, if I have 4 to the log base 4 of x squared, the 4 and log base 4 undo each other and we're just left with x squared. And log base 7 of uh, of 1 is going to be 0 because 7 to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, um, the f so let me write out those properties of logs. Natural log of e to the x equals x. Um, e to the natural log of x. Oops, sorry. Equals x. And we have... Um, log base a of a equals 1 and um, a to the log base a of x equals x and log base a of a to the x equals x. So these are all properties of logarithms and um, natural log of 1 equals 0. So these are all properties. Okay, so um, the formula represents the pH of a liquid as a function of its concentration of hydrogen ions. Find the pH of the following. So I want to find the pH of bleach with H plus equal to that. And so what I want to do is I want to say that the pH is equal to the negative log of this number, 2 times 10 to the negative 13. And so I can plug that into my calculator, or I could just use properties of log to find this. So it's going to be negative log log of 2 um, minus log of log base 10. Well, it's base 10 of 10 to the negative 13. So this is just going to be um, negative 13. But, so we'll have log 2, negative log 2, plus 13. And so I can put that in my calculator, and I got 12.698. Okay, and then um, this one, I can say that the pH is equal to negative log of 4.1 times 10 to the negative 10. So this simplifies to negative log of 4.1 minus log of 10 to the negative 10, which is just going to be negative log of 4.1 plus 10, um, which is uh, 9.3, 9.4 if we round. And then write the logarithmic expression as sums and differences of logarithms and simplify. OK, 
okay. So for this one, we can start by breaking it up into um, into uh, parts. So we can have the natural log of um, P times Q to the 1 fourth uh, minus the natural log of X cubed times M. And that equals um, 1 fourth times the natural log of PQ minus 3 times the natural log of X minus the natural log of M. Then write the logarithmic expression. That is a single logarithm and simplify. So anything that, um, so first I'm gonna bring up the powers. So these are all the powers. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, is I'll write it as a fraction. So I basically have log of x to the sixth minus log of y to the one third minus log of z to the two thirds which is equal to, so this one is gonna go in the denominator and this one's gonna go in the denominator because they're negative. So I get log of x to the sixth on top over y to the one third times z to the two thirds. Okay, solve the following exponential equations. Give an exact answer and an approximation. So for this one, I'm gonna start by isolating the eight to the four X minus one by subtracting 22 from both sides. So when I do 163 minus 22, whoops, 163 minus 22, I get 141. So eight to the four X minus one equals 141. Um, and so then I can um, take a log base eight of both sides, or I could just take it, let's go ahead and just take a natural log of both sides, I guess. So if I take a natural log of both sides, I get four X minus one natural log of eight equals the natural log of 141, once you take that power down front. So then I can divide, I get four X minus one equals natural log of 141 divided by natural log of eight. And then I can add one and divide by four. So uh, let's bring this up here. 4x equals natural log of 141 divided by natural log of 8 minus 1, or plus 1, sorry, add 1 to both sides, and then divide all that by 4. So I'll just say 1 fourth times all that. Natural log of 141 over natural log of 8 plus 1. And so for my approximation, I get... This one. Okay, 0.8449, uh, four decimal places. So 0.84496, so that goes up to 0.8450. Okay, and then this one here, I can divide both sides by 700 and I get 1 seventh equals e to the negative 0.2x. And then I can take the natural log both, of both sides and then divide by negative 0.2. So I get for an approximation, I get 9.7, let's see. 9.7296. Okay, when I round. All right, for the next one, I um, guess I'll delete or erase this and do the next one. Okay, so for part C, I'll do it in yellow. I, I can take the um, natural log of both sides and I get x plus five times the natural log of nine equals the natural log of 142. Then I can divide by natural log nine. I get x plus five equals the natural log of 142 divided by the natural log of nine. And then I can subtract five from both sides. And I get a value for x. 
And then for approximation, I can say natural log, oops, natural log of 142 divided by natural log of 9 um, minus 5 gives me negative 2.745. Uh, four, four, five, negative 2.7445. Okay, and then the last one on this page is this part D. Oh, so I'll erase this and do part D here. And so I can just go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Um, and so I get. 3x minus 1 natural log of 16 equals x plus 2 times the natural log of 64. Okay, so um, in order to solve for x here, I'm going to have to distribute this natural log of 16 and distribute this natural log of 64. And then we'll get the things with x in them on the same side. So I get 3x natural log 16 minus natural log of 16 equals x natural log of 64 plus 2 natural log of 64. Okay, and then um, I notice that this term and that term have an x in them, so I'm going to get them on the same side. And so I get um, 3x natural log 16 minus x natural log of 64 equals natural log of 16 plus 2 natural log of 64. Okay, and then I want to pull an x out of this side. So I notice that that has an x and that has an x, so I'll pull it out. So I get x times 3 natural log of 16 minus natural log of 64 equals natural log of 16 plus 2 natural log of 64. And then I can divide by that. So I get x equals natural log of 16 plus 2 natural log 64 divided by 3 natural log 16 minus natural log 64. And I approximate that and we get, what do we get? Let's see what we get. Two point six six. Okay, um, so that's that one. Let's look at the next page. Okay, solve the following logarithmic equations. And so I can just, on these I see log of something is equal to log of something else. So we can just really set these inside things equal to one another. So I get x squared plus 7x equals 18. So I can subtract the 18 over. And then I can factor, so, oh, sorry, equals zero, not 18, oh, sorry, equals zero. So I get x equal negative nine and x equal two. And so what I need to do is plug both of those values in just to make sure I don't have any extraneous solutions. So if I plug negative nine into this, I have um, nine squared plus six, 7 times negative 9, and that gives me a positive 18, so that's good. And then if I do 2 squared plus 7 times 2, that's also positive. So what I'm looking for is um, if it were, if it happened that the inside part was negative, that would be an extraneous solution, but that doesn't happen here. Okay, and in part B, I want to solve that one. And so I can, um, let's see, I can add log base 4 of x plus 6, x minus 6 over to the other side. And so I'll get log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of x minus 6 equals 2. So I can combine these into a single log x squared minus 6x multiply those two together equals 2 and then I can write it in exponential form so 4 to the second so x squared minus 6x equals 4 to the second that or sorry 2 to the fourth excuse me 
well, strong way around. T uh, four, no, four to the second. So, sorry, the base is four and the power is two. So, four to the second power. So, that's 16. So, x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals zero. Okay. And so 16 is 8 times 2, so I can do x minus 8x, x plus 2, so x equals 8 and negative 2. Let's make sure that's not extraneous. So I can see if I plug negative 2 into this one, I'll have log of a negative. So that actually throws out that one because I can't have log of a negative number. So for these logarithmic ones, just as soon as you find the answer, you just make sure go back and make sure that... Um, they'll work with the original equation. So for this one, the only answer is x equal eight. So that x equal negative two is an extraneous solution. Okay, so on January 1st, 2000, the population of Texas was 21 million. On January 1st, 2010, the population was that. Um, write a function of the form P naught e to the KT, T years after January 1st. Okay, so my P naught I know is 21 million. So I have 21 million e to the kt. So I don't know what k is, but I know that after when t is 10 years, that the population is equal to 25.2. So I can go ahead and plug in all those variables and I can solve for that k, which is what I don't know. So I can start by dividing both sides by 21. So that gives me 1.2 equals e to the 10k. And then I can take the natural log of both sides and divide by 10. Oh, divide by 10, excuse me. So I'll have natural log 1.2 divided by 10. And I want to find that to five decimal places. So Natural log of 1.2 divided by 10 is 0 0.018232. So 0 0.018232 is my K. Use the function from part A to predict the population on January 1st, 2020, round to one decimal place. So I can say P of 20 equals 21e to the 0 0.01823 times 20. And so I can plug that in. e to the 0 0.01823 times 20 gives me 30,000, 30, 30, wait, round to one decimal place. So 30.2 um, million people. So that's the answer to part B. And for part C, use the function to predict the year when the population will reach 40 million if the trend continues. So I can plug in 40 million and solve for T. 0 0.01823T. I wanna solve that for T. So I can divide by 21. Um, so the natural log of 40 over 21 is equal to 0 0.01823t, and I can divide by that and get t is equal to 0.01823. So I get natural log of 40 over 21. Oh, divided by, whoops, divided by, divided by. <laughs> Divided by 0 0.018, oh, is it 3, 3? 2, 3. Sorry, I wrote that down wrong. 2, 3. Okay, and then I went around that. I guess I just want T. Okay, so equals, I get 35.3 years. So in the year 2035. So um, let's look at problem 73. So use that function to determine the age of an artifact that has 38% of its carbon-14 remaining. So what we want is 
we want we want Q naught times thirty eight percent to be equal to Q naught times e to the negative point zero 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 one two one t. Boy, that is tiny text. Oh, I gotta get my glasses out. Okay, <laughs> so um. Yeah, so we can divide both sides by Q naught. The Q naughts go away, and we're left with we can take the natural log of 0.38 equals negative 0.0001211t, and I can divide that over. I get t is equal to natural log of 0.38 divided by negative 0.000121, which is 0.38 divided by negative 0.000121 gives me 7,996.5 years old. Okay, so that was 73. Okay, let's look at 74. So on 74, it says the number of computers infected by a virus can be approximated by that. Determine the number of computers initially infected. So that would be the, a time zero. So I just want to look at, for this one, 74, I want to look at n of zero, which is 2.4 over 1 plus 15 e to the zero. is 0.15 and that is million computers. Okay. How many computers were infected after six months? Um, oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, so time is in months. Okay, so I wanna plug in six for T. Okay because it says that time is in months. I was thinking at first that time was in years, but it's not. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna plug in six for T. So N of six equals 2.4 divided by one plus 15 E to the negative point zero seven. Oh, sorry, negative point, sorry, point seven two times six. <laughs> I'm going to plug all that into my calculator. I suggest you go ahead and plug this in too, just to make sure you're getting all the parentheses. Because what we need to do, <coughs> excuse me, is 2.4 divided by, open parentheses, 1 plus 15 e to the negative, oh, and it makes a parentheses, negative 0. 0.72 times 6. Close those parentheses and close the parentheses around the whole bottom. So we need to have parentheses around this whole bottom and also around this power, right? So um, make sure you have all those parentheses, and if you get that, you get two million computers. Well, it's like 2.000836, whatever. So if I run round to the nearest 100,000, oh gosh, so 2.001, okay, whatever. 2.001. There you go. What is the limiting value of the number of computers affected according to this model? Okay, so if I go into my y equals, I can plug this in. I get 2.4 divided by, I'm just going to plug it in like a y equals like a function. So 1 plus 15 um, e to the negative 0.72x. Okay, and then I can go to table, second table, and I can look. And what I see is that as the, um, yeah, when I get to like 19 years or 19 months, it's really at 2.4. So it looks like the limiting value to me is 2.4. And on these types of functions, these are called logistic functions. The limiting value is that top number um, because this part of the equation is going to go to zero. So you're just going to get 2.4 over 1 as t gets bigger and bigger. Okay, last one. So 2.4, oh sorry, 2.4 million computers. Okay. 
Okay. The amount of sunlight in Langley's, oh, I've never heard of that before, is measured for six different depths in Lake Lyndon B. Johnson in Texas. So the amount of sunlight in Langley's, oh, oh that's cool. Use a graphing calculator to find exponential regression that fits the data. So we want to um, do, go to stat, edit, and then enter that data in. So I have one, three, five, whoops, seven, nine, and then nothing. I have other data I need to delete. One, three, five, seven, nine, okay. All right, and then I have 300, 161, 89. So as we get deeper, there's less sunlight. That makes sense. Okay, oops, how do I have too many? 300, 161, 89, 50, 27, 15. Oh, I, sh I forgot my 11, okay. Um, so then I can go to stat, calculate, and I want to calculate the exponential regression. And it will compute that for me. So I get y equals, my calculator says 399 point, to, nearest hundred, so two decimal places, 0.71 um, times 0.74 to the x. So there's my exponential regression that my calculator gave me.